Vatican has uh, had the Jesuits uh, doing all kinds of incredibly uh, dark things around the world, uh, which we today would call terrorism, uh, blowing up buildings and and, and uh, killing people at the airports and all that kind of stuff. The Jesuits are very interested in that kind of stuff, and and they cause that chaos to frighten the people, and so that the people will turn to uh, the church, and they are actually perfecting their political maneuverings by assassinations, by bombings, and all kinds. Of, and from there, you get to, if you're studying the Jesuits, and their uh, terrorism around the world, going back hundreds of years, all the way back to 1500s, you also come into contact with, in the last couple of hundred years, something in the, in the Vatican called Propaganda Due or P2. If you go on the uh, web and just type in P, uh, P and a 2, P2 Lodge, and you will see that P2 is, is in, in, in uh, Italian is uh, Propaganda Due. And Propaganda Due was a secret society of bankers and assassins and all kinds of mafiosis, gangsters, underworld organizations all around the world to create chaos, to create terrorism, uh, to cause uh, the, the death of leaders of countries, propaganda due. And it's actually uh, in, in the Godfather series, the movie Godfather series, the third in the series, the last one, Godfather 3, the whole movie of Godfather 3 is about P2, propaganda due, and what they're doing, and how the Vatican is doing business with all of the most powerful underworld uh, organized crime figures around the world in different countries, orchestrating the distribution of drugs, heroin, uh, all the different uh, illegal drug trafficking, plus white slavery, child, uh, child slavery. Uh, it's an incredible, dark, scary world that the Medellin cartels in South America and Central America, all those uh, cartels that are flooding the world, especially America, with, with drugs and murder. You're reading about it every day. Uh, all of this is orchestrated in the Vatican, period. End of sentence, period. All of this is understood, being operated through the Vatican. And, and our organizations like P2, the Jesuits and other uh, nefarious organizations and organized criminal syndicates are operating now in the, in the Middle East. They're operating in Russia with the Russian Mafia with uh, with the uh, Italian Sicilian connection, all of this stuff in organized crime ultimately ultimately goes back to Rome all the way back to the days of Caesars of Rome, and as I've said before, the Roman Empire has dominated Europe for about twenty three hundred years, and with the fall of the Roman Empire in the fifth century. Uh, the official fall of the Roman Empire, uh, the, for, the, for the last 1,600 years, the Vatican has dominated. Well, we're talking about Rome. We're talking about the Rome as a world power. Well, the Rome is a world power. Why? Because of the Vatican sits in the middle of Rome, and it is the brains behind what we used to call the ancient Roman Empire. And it's still here today. They've set up a, uh, an organization. They took over uh, uh, our government a long time ago. The Vatican sly slyly came in quietly, bought up politicians, murdered some, frightened others, assassinated some, and ultimately today the Vatican dominates the United States 
uh, corporation. It, it's it's an incredible story. It, it certainly is, Jordan. And you know what's amazing is that in earlier shows you covered exactly how we can see the resonant organization in the United States is based on the Roman concept of organization. Uh, and, and you, you told that extensively during other shows, but here's something I think a lot of people don't know. The structure within, uh, uh, the, the legitimate or the really well organized, I should say, not legitimate, that's a bad word, but the really well organized Sicilian criminal organizations is based on the military structure of Rome. In fact, uh, the, the entire concept, the way it's done with tribute being paid upward in the chain, uh, the, the idea that there are, uh, captains and individuals which are given particular ranks within organized crime. This is, uh, actually another fingerprint of ancient Rome. It, it, it's based more on the constructs of the Roman legions, but, um, still the same structure is inspired by the same people. Is that not true? Yes. As a matter of fact, in the second movie of Godfather 2, there was a there was a a scene in there <clears throat> when the uh, attorney <clears throat> the Godfather's attorney was talking with one of the other mob guys who's been convicted and he was going to die in prison and so the attorney went to visit him and you see the attorney walking with this mob guy who's going to die <clears throat> uh, and and he, they're talking about their lives together. And the attorney, I think it was the attorney said, in the movie Godfather 2, he said, remember our thing, our, our, our thing that we do was based on the old ancient Roman Empire. This is the way we run our business today, the same way Rome ran its business to control the world. It's never changed. It's still the same thing. And today, organized crime around the world in different countries is always being backed up uh, and put together, organized, directed, and financed out of Europe, out of Rome. And so if, you, if you're tired of organized crime all over the world, just look at the Vatican because that is where it's all being formulated, <clears throat> put together and formulated to, uh, to organize it so that it works so well. And this is why organized crime works so incredibly well, because it has a world-class institution that's been around for 2,300 years of knowing how to control nations and peoples and, and laws and regulations and how to control the masses of millions of people. Mm -hmm and the ancient Roman Empire. Well, today we're still doing the same thing. Well, what's funny is I wasn't thinking of that scene in Godfather, but since you brought it up, you reminded me. See, I told you, Jordan's mind goes to places that mine doesn't even go. I wasn't thinking of that. But uh, even during that scene, he describes how an individual could turn around, and when once they had been... Uh, uh, you know, accused of betraying the emperor, they could find a way to, to, uh, to die honorably and not have their family also That's be right. punished. And, That's uh, right. he talks about opening his wrists and the whole thing. And then the character winds up doing that in order to, again, protect his family. You know, he's done for. He's betrayed the emperor, so to speak. He's yep. betrayed the Don. So therefore, yeah, I mean, the honor codes and all that stuff, which you hear about, uh, among the Italians, it's all based on this. Uh, now, now what's fascinating is, now you, you've covered this in a way, but I just wanted to mention that part about how not just the governments, but the criminal organizations are also constructed under the same template. But here's the amazing thing, Jordan. You were going to tell us about how it is this could be changed or reformed or the reformation of and the roots of how it all got there. I mean, is it all just the Roman structure repeating itself throughout history, or is there more to it? Oh, I think there's a lot more to it. But I think Rome perfected the establishment of, uh, of the uh, institutions of mankind that are necessary to control the, 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 the man and woman and child on the earth. They were brilliant when they put together the institutions uh, that would promote 
their philosophy and their control of the world and do it in such a way that no one seemed to realize what was really going on. Today we have educational institutions, universities and, and, and colleges, never ever realizing the very word college comes from the collegia in, in, in Italy, in Rome. And it's called the Collegia or the College of Cardinals. So when you go to college, that's a Roman, Latin, Roman, Catholic term. College. I don't care what college. It's Roman. And it's run like Rome. And uh, so when you look at the words and terms, when you go to college, you start off and you're a sophomore. Well, the, in, the, in the ancient world, the word sophomore meant you were an idiot. You were totally mentally deranged, goofy idiot that didn't know how to, how to find your way out of a paper bag. So that anything that's really screwy and stupid today, we call sophomoric, meaning this is stuff that sophomores talk about. Sophomore means you're stupid. And then later on, you have something called a freshman. Oh, there, you're a freshman in school. You know, you're a fresh man, and you're a sophomore. You're ignorant and stupid. And so we're going to teach you what to kiss and when, and we're going to teach you how to operate in this world, and we will give you a diploma. If you answer all the questions correctly, then you get a diploma, which is a work permit. And now you can go out and, and earn a living with a work permit. But it comes from the word collegia, college, university. And so all the most important universities around the world are either owned by or run by Jesuits or some division of the Roman system of ancient Rome. So this is why I say that I don't think the world is able to extricate itself out of the mess we're in because so many people just do not realize the size and the implications of how big this apparatus really is. It goes back thousands of years. And you think all the things that were going on 5,000 years ago was just a bunch of, um, a bunch of primitive uh, goofballs doing whatever they call themselves doing. No, they were perfecting the the whole idea of perfecting how to control the human race. And when it came to the founding of the Roman Empire, they had some incredibly fascinating ideas about how to impact the human. As a matter of fact, it was Albert Pike, the head of the Masonic Order, uh, the, the the highest ranking Freemason wrote a book, but in and I just recall that in the first couple of pages, he talked about if you're going to control the whole world, it's impossible to do because there's too many different kinds of people, too many different ideas, and you're never going to be able to uh, to uh, force the whole human race to do anything because you just don't have an army big enough. But, uh, but, out of, but he said, but look at the world as one, one thing, one man, one woman, and one child. That's the way you got to look at the entire earth of mankind, one man, one woman, and one child. So what is it that you need to do uh, to capture the minds and the hearts of one man. And so it explains how you work on the human mind. And therefore, if you could get one man uh, uh, buying into something, use the same method to get the whole male population of the world to buy into it. Because all men are men. So learn how to control one man and you've got the whole world. Learn how to control one woman, her, her, her thinking, her body, the way she feel, feels about things, the way she views things. Uh, learn how to control her, one woman, and now you've got all the women in the world. And so this goes all the way back to the professional uh, you know, politicians 
and and the founding of America went to get away from all of that. And most people are not aware that when the United States of America as a republic was originally founded, two uh, institutions were not allowed in this country. Go back and read the encyclopedias about the founding of America, and you will find there were two separate institutions that the founding fathers of America said would not and could not exist in this country under any circumstances. One was the Vatican. One was the Vatican and the Catholic Church, period, was not allowed uh, to, uh, to have any sway in this country whatsoever. And the other was the banking institutions of, the, of Europe and of the Roman Empire. And so today that's all we have are banks in the church everywhere. And all the different churches, even including the, the, the York Rite uh, cults like Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons and Seventh-day Adventists, Christadelphians, Worldwide Church of God, uh, all of the different York Rite cults today in America and in Europe are all based on the ancient Roman canon laws, ancient Roman maritime admiralty laws, all of the secret uh, contracts and things which have been signed to start different religions, even the whole British Israel World Federation uh, that I talked about a long time ago. British Israel World Federation. Go do some homework on that. And you will find that there's a world of... of, of treason and all kinds of incredible lies and deception that's been perpetrated by Rome on the world. And that's what we even have today as old saying that says, all roads lead to Rome. I don't care what kind of criminality you're talking about, from child sacrifice to, to white slavery to buying and selling children and women around the world to our narcotics trafficking uh, you know, and, and people who put together wars, you've got to have a fight promoter, so you've got to have people who put together the wars for us and sell us on the idea and then send us into battle. Well, those people are trained. You will find they're always trained at the best universities in America, which are Jesuit-run, Jesuit-owned. And so it's a very, very big and dark and old and ancient story that if we, you know, that's why I say all the time that I don't think it's possible to change the destiny of the human race now. My my feeling is, and it's it's actually my feeling, and it's just my feeling, my uh, is my understanding. I don't think anything is going to change for us on the earth unless and until there is some kind of an intervention in our affairs by a higher power. I would prefer to think that that would be God who would inter intervene in our, uh, uh, you know, intervene in our normal uh, de destiny as a human family. Well, you know, we read in the Bible sometimes in the past we're told that God intervened in our, in our business here on the earth and created a worldwide flood and killed everybody, I would not be a bit surprised if the gods themselves, the great spirits who have overseen our our creation and who are watching our destiny unfold, that they are going to do something to clean up the direction and the destiny of the whole entire human family. Because we have become so uh, far out of line, was so totally uh, corrupt in all of our thinking that all the nations of the world are corrupt. And we are now seeing uh, slavery, prostitution, drug running, you know, uh, wars and violence and gang, gang violence everywhere on the earth, including the deepest parts of Africa, still looks just like us. What, what they're doing is what we're doing. So I'm afraid that for the human family, we are going to have to experience something very, very bad uh, before the spirit that created us can recreate us and start us back on a different road. Uh, because if not, if we're left, if we're left alone now, 
Uh, I don't know how we're going to make it to the next century. I, I don't know how we're going to make it to the next 10 years.